Jackson. My name is Ivan Cody. I'm one of the ASB coordinators here, along with... And I'm Natalie Fisher. I'm the other ASB coordinator. <laughs> All right, awesome. So, so let's start with the most basic question you're going to get. What is ASB? ASB is basically spending a week fully immersed in a public interest internship or legal experience where you can get experience for the entire week and possibly pro bono hours to go towards your graduate, I mean your graduation requirement. So, um, I actually learned not too long ago that ASB uh, up until four or five years ago was completely student run, um, which would be crazy considering the cost and travel and expenses that come with that. So it was started um, right after Hurricane Katrina in 2005. A group of students decided, hey, we got to help out. This has been a horrible tragedy in our nation. Um, and so now it has grown into this large successful program that matches students to both local and national placements during the week of spring break. Um, and the program focuses on areas of the law where clients often lack adequate representation. So in the ASB placements, a lot of times you're going to be working like one-on-one -on -one with clients um, in your placement. And why is it right for you? Um, I knew it was right for me when I was a 1L because I came straight from undergrad. Um, and had no legal experience whatsoever. So I said, okay, I got to go and do this because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and it's also a great way to experience new areas of the law. So let's say you're conflicted. Do I do criminal defense? Do I do immigration? I'm not sure. This is a great way to test the waters and figure out what you're interested in. Um, it's also just a great way to give back to the community. Um, oftentimes the clients are going to be like super thankful that you were here. Um, they might even confuse you with lawyers. Uh, and it's a great resume builder too. Um, looks great. All right, let's get to the, every law student's worst nightmare, a little bit of math. So, <laughs> so this is a way to earn possibly your 50 pro bono hours. We, while we can't guarantee you'll get 50 hours, this is a little breakdown about how you can possibly get to those hours. So assuming that the five days a week, eight hours a day, that's 40 hours right there. But a little disclaimer, you might not be, like, of course, like sicknesses while you're out at your placement. You might not be there that day, which is going to count against you. Or whether a couple of years ago, we actually had a placement in Colorado that got snowed in. So they weren't even able to make it to the placement. So I think it was like three out of the five days, they weren't even able to go there. So you've got to keep that in mind when you're doing this program. Also, there's the mandatory ASB orientation, which is before the trip, which will be two hours towards your pro bono hours, which will come. We'll talk about how you're going to act on your placement. We're going to give you a little coaching up, you know, a little pep talk, high fives, all that jazz. And then, <laughs> and then after that, uh, we, we also have the reflection journaling. Now, this is an option. Like, you don't have to do it. I personally did it because I felt it helpful. We have prompts. So along, so along the seven days of your journey, you're going to have, you can uh, write down different things like, oh, how was this experience today? How is this experience the next day? And that's like an hour a day that'll be counted towards your pro bono hours of just writing about your experiences. And if you have trouble like, I don't know what to write about, don't worry, talk to one of us. We can definitely help you out, get the juices flowing in your head. And then, of course, the last thing, which is our debriefing. So after everyone comes back, you get to stand in front right here where me and Natalie are right now and explain how this trip was transformative and how it helped you and what you would change, what would you not. It's also helpful for the program going forward. So all of that will equal about 50 hours, but again, we can't guarantee the 50 hours, but we'll try our best to get you there. So here's a list of a little flavoring of a couple of placements that we had last year. So we have like the Waterfront Commission of Public Defender's <coughs> offices around Mass as well as here in Rhode Island. We also have some very interesting ones like ones out in uh, Denver, Colorado, which is working in the African organization, as well as ones in Western New York, which you'll split time between Bath and Rochester, which is a very interesting and unique placement. Me and Natalie, however, got to go to the Waterfront Commission of New York Harbor. So quick question, show of hands, how many people here think that the Waterfront Commission of New York Harbor has to do with marine affairs, and like water law and things along that nature. Right? I thought the same exact thing, but I, <laughs> I couldn't be further from the truth. The Waterfront Commission actually deals with organized crime on the waterfront. So a lot of what we did is we, we dealt with a lot of depositions, dealing with trying to get as many mobsters off the waterfront as possible, which, I mean, I, I thought like, oh, that's just movie stuff. 
Definitely not. Also, while me and Natalie were there, it was actually when the Gambino crime boss was murdered. So we walked into the office unsuspectingly. Depositions were canceled, security breaches. It was just an entire mess, but it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so that's my little plug-in for the Waterfront Commission. All right, by a show of hands, who has worked in the public sector before coming to law school? Perfect. If any of you had like super awesome experiences with uh, your area, um, please come up to me afterwards if you think that uh, they would be at all interested in hosting students or you would want uh, students to go there, please let us know. We're always looking for new placements. Um, so yeah, just come up to me about that. Um, right now we're trying to get an ASB placement in Chicago, um, possibly one at the border in Texas. So if you have any ideas about where you want to go, please come up and let us know. Yeah, it also helps with the whole transformation of the program with the political climate and things. We try to keep our placements as current as possible with issues, whether it be the Hurricane Katrina when the program initially started versus now a lot of immigration law and a lot of things along that nature is very prominent in society. All right, so what is ASB going to cost you? numbers here. Local placements, which include Rhode Island and Southeastern Mass, that's going to be a fee of $25. Placements outside of Rhode Island and Southeastern Mass are going to be $100. Um, and there is going to be a stipend associated with this. So right after you pay all these program fees and when it's ASB week, you are going to get approximately $200 or $300 for the non-local placements. You're not going to get any stipend for the local placement because we're assuming that you're going to be staying at your apartment and you're going to be able to drive to your placement and pay for the parking and whatnot. So let me just, I want to make sure it's clear because this is always an issue with um, costs. So this is a subsidized program, which is great. We don't make you do big sales. A lot of law schools, the students need to generate the money, but we want to make sure that those of you who are interested in traveling to a location outside of Rhode Island and Southeast Mass can do it without a huge financial hardship. So the way it works is, like Natalie just said, if you're local, if you're Rhode Island or Southeastern Mass, obviously you're just gonna sort of pay for living like you normally would. If you're going to New York City, which is a, a really popular spot for ASB, we do give you a stipend. It's about $300 for that week. $300 will not get you far if you're planning on staying in a hotel in New York. So my feeling, because we have a lot of New York City placements, is that placement works well if you have somewhere to live or you have a really smart way to Airbnb with a group of law students. Mm -hmm. But you will end up paying out of pocket because that stipend just can't cover it. So I like to make sure everyone understands that. You need to also get yourself to New York City. So any placement that's within about four hours, you will get a stipend, but we're not gonna get you there. You need to figure out how you're gonna get there. If you're farther than, farther than four hours, so you're in Colorado or Texas, or we're working on a placement right now possibly in Washington State, the law school will arrange for airfare or uh, in some rare, case, rare cases train, like we have a Delaware placement. We actually do purchase your ticket on Amtrak to get to Delaware. So if you're thinking of a really far trip, not New York City, like Colorado, we will pay for your airfare and you're gonna get that stipend. So again, you likely will have to spend something out of pocket, but it's subsidized. Is that sort of helpful? So everyone has a fee, everyone has to pay either 25 or 100, but then again, if you're travel, we're trying to subsidize it and make it easier. But just remember, this is not a fully paid for trip. You gotta sort of figure it out or get really creative. Yeah, and just to put that into context, uh, I went to the waterfront of New York Harbor, which was right in Manhattan, and if, I don't know if, how many people are familiar with Manhattan, but a, a meal in Manhattan is about like, 20 bucks and you're definitely not going to get a hotel just with the $300 but luckily I went to undergrad in Manhattan so I had a friend who had an apartment just like a block away from my placement so that helped offset some of the costs so if you're thinking about placements like New York City you, you really want to think about how you're going to get to and from this placement and how you're going to pay for like meals uh, uh, the subway for instance and mm -hmm. other things like that but that's something we can like talk about if you need some advice, things along that nature, a little coaching, that's what we're here for, guys. So we can definitely be more clairvoyant on that going forward. All right, so how do you apply? Um, the application is gonna go live December 20th, 2019. Actually, 
I want all of you to take out your calendars and start <laughs> writing this down. I'm going to give you a second. Or phones. It is the 21st yeah. century. Phones, <laughs> calendars, whatever. <laughs> Okay, so that's gonna go live December 20th. I encourage all of you guys to apply as early as possible. One of the biggest um, ways that we rate applications are when we get them. So the people who apply earliest have a much higher chance of getting the placement you want than people who save it to the last second. Um, you're gonna receive an email in advance uh, with all the placement descriptions and instructions how to apply. So it'll list every single placement, where it is, what it's about. I encourage you also to do um, further research on the placement. Ivan and I went to the waterfront last year and of course we didn't know what it was about. And it was a new placement last year. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, I guess we're fighting crime here, so. Um, and then you can also rank your placement preferences preferences when you apply. So I think last year we got to rank up to five placements that we wanted to go. And usually people get between their first and third choice. Well, while we can't guarantee that, we try our best to try to get you within, you know, your top three choices. But the five gives us a little leeway and don't worry, there'll be an email about that to make sure. All right, so applications are due January 9th, 2020. Um, I want you guys to keep in mind that this is the first week of spring semester. You're gonna be like so busy. You're gonna have homework. You're gonna have be like maybe flying back from home, taking a long train ride. So just try really hard not to save it till that last day. Um, and accepted students will be notified somewhere around January 17th, 2020. And just to touch on what Natalie was talking about before about how we uh, fit you with your particular placement. It's not just, it's not just uh, the priority aspect, while that it carries a lot of the weight, we also look at the strength and quality of your application. So you're gonna be submitting, submitting a resume and a personal statement. So we're gonna read it and see which placement might actually fit you best. Uh, we take that into uh, consideration as well, as well as your connection with the placement. Like I was lucky to put into my essay, oh, I'm, I went to undergrad in New York City, I, work, I know the area pretty well, and that kind of helped me, you know, so which situate myself into getting a New York City placement, as well as the skills that are required by each placement. Each placement is different, whether it be very heavy going into court and just watching how the, the court plays out, or whether it's sitting there writing. I know for me and Natalie's placement, we were expected to write law review style articles right from day one. That way we can produce a writing sample to get ready for this uh, summer of our, after our 1L year. So, it really varies, but we try to look at your skills, your personal statement, all these factors go together, but I can't stress this enough, get those applications in early. It makes a difference, lots of peace of mind, you don't have to worry about it, and you can go enjoy your little break, you know, after you finish your first semester, whether it be like your 2L or 3L enjoying, you know, that nice little Christmas break with the family. And some other important dates to remember, January 22nd. That's the date we're gonna be looking for after you've already been notified whether you've been accepted in your placement. That's where we're gonna be looking for the fees. So we're looking for those to be paid. We're also looking for the commitment forms, basically saying, yes, I intend to do ASB and I commit myself to this. And you're all law students, you know, when you sign your little uh, John Hancock at the bottom of a paper, it, it carries a little bit of weight. Uh, also, February 5th. It's going, we're gonna have a nice little coffee and introduction session, so we're gonna to try to bring people in from past placements to talk about the pe uh, people who are just you know, new to the ASB program and don't know what to expect from their placement. We're gonna to try to get as many of those people here so you can like, just pick their brains a little bit. Like, luckily, me and Natalie have been for the Waterfront Commission, so those who are placed there will be able to give you a little bit more personal feel, but don't worry. We'll try to get as many of the other placement people here as well so that you can get that type of familiarity with your particular site. Also, very important, can't stress this enough, this is another date I would write down. February 28th, that's going to be your pre-trip orientation. It is something we highly stress you cannot miss. If it's something that, along the lines, if you can't make that date, maybe ASB this year might not be for you. Now while there might be special circumstances where you not, might not be able to make that and you wanna reach out to us, that's perfectly fine, but seriously consider that date. It's a very important date to get you guys started and ready to go off, and we can't stress it enough how important that date is. One more thing about the coffee hour on the 5th. 
Um, we're going to try as hard as we can to get people from past placements, but that may be a little bit difficult to do. So really the importance of that coffee hour is to meet people in, who are going to the same placement as you. So maybe you can schedule maybe a carpool to get there, or if you're going to rent an Airbnb together or something like that. Um, spring break is March 9th through the 13th, so if you guys want to write that down, you can. Um, so what's next? You're going to get a survey today um, via email somewhere around 1 p.m. or so. I know that there are probably people who were not able to make this meeting but want to do ASB, so please, if they're your friends and they weren't able to be here, just let them know to look out for that survey, fill that survey out. Um, also, you can go to the Career Service Development Center um, to get your resume ready. So when that date comes, December 20th, when the application opens, that is one less thing you have to worry about preparing. Um, and then also just like get ready to have fun. It's a really great experience. Um, Ivan and I can't stress enough how much fun we had at the waterfront. So, For sure. Um, if you guys have any questions that you think pertain to everything that we've talked about and pertain to the group as a whole, please ask them now. Um, write down our emails if you need those. Um, and Ivan and I are going to stay back for a couple minutes if you guys have any personal specific questions about ASB that we can help you with. And also feel free to, if you see us in the hallways or you, like, you see Nat like, creeping around or me, very tall, very easy to spot walking around the halls, uh, feel free to just tap us on the shoulder. Hey ask us a question. We're very personable, at least I think we are. So, <laughs> unless it's around finals week, because that's a little different, but feel free to ask us as many questions as possible. We love this program. Clear, clearly, we're the coordinators, and we'd just love to help you guys and have that same experience that we did. Can I mention one thing? So, the mm -hmm. email is going to go out to the entire law student listserv. It's going to be from Lisa Quinn, and in addition to having that survey, which helps us gauge how many of you are really interested, um, it also had the brochure of all of the placements last year. We have 22 placements, and we sent 77 students on ASB. We hope that we can continue, we pretty much were able to place nearly every student. We try not to make this a super competitive program, so it's okay if you have no connection to an organization, like that's what the program's for. Um, but if we get inundated this year, you know, if we get 120 of you apply, obviously it'll change things, but we have been able to meet the, the uh, the desire to go on, on these trips, so hopefully we'll do that again. But that email will have last year's brochure with an entire list of the placements, um, the survey, and that's it, right, Lisa? Oh, and, sli and the slides from today's program. So your friends who missed it, they'll get all this information through that email. So look for Lisa Quinn's email. Just without the jokes. <laughs> Any questions? All right. Oh, oh. those are one right there. Uh, Wait, no, not a question. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you.